Hello, in this tutorial, we will go through how to create a codices project that links to a ABR series using EIP, Ethernet IP. Okay, so uh, without further ado, first thing, please go to the ABR website, and then most importantly, yeah, it actually prov provides you with a sample project for you to copy from. Okay, so you can just go over here code this uh, third PLC sample code okay this will be the codices project and you can download it okay so now let me go through go to your downloads and if you extract the project you'll come up with a node and the project itself okay so let me open up the project file and we'll look at the oh yeah, the notes, okay? So uh based on this note, okay, uh, which is very important, is that it actually states that the current uh eh, the current EDS file right that uh that had a lot had a lot of issues and codices is not interpreting impre interpreting it correctly. So yeah. So for now we will need to use a uh, stick with a genetic co generic connection, okay? So that is the reason why you have to yeah, always look for the sample project, okay? So now if we go over here, so this is the sample project. Why are we doing here? Okay. Be because uh, it's actually imported from a different uh, codices version that's why uh, most of it will not be compatible with a lot of errors so right now what we want to do is to create our own project from scratch for sp615 okay so okay okay so now with the new project you need to create a new project okay and then we can uh, find the place that you want to store it in for me I want to store it in barcode okay and I'll call it uh, EIP okay and I create a new project choose my uh, controller Yes. Okay. So first thing first in the EIP project, please check your main device. What version? So right now I'm running SP seventy eight sixteen dot seventy. Which is uh if it does not match your hardware setting then you need to update it, like in my case. Okay. So you can actually change the version over here and choose the one that match which is for me I loaded 16.30 in my actual hardware that I'm using okay so once it's loaded run a general scan okay if you can scan it and you can connect means there is no problem on my hardware side okay so now firstly we need to add a uh, we need to add a Ethernet IP okay so first add an Ethernet controller an Ethernet adapter from there link it to a scanner okay and you see it will automatically create the EIP task which is very important so you see I actually previously I have uh, another video on how to load the EDS file and that's where I got this but if you follow the instructions from the manual that you just downloaded you need to use this generic Ethernet IP device okay so close Ethernet IP device link it to your network okay so now we will need to start configuring from scratch so 
this is also when so remember the project we just downloaded yeah over here the one with a lot of uh, errors okay so right now what we really need to get is actually the connection information so if you double click this we'll get uh, some of the data hmm wait this is weird Uh huh. Okay, wait. I think this is the wrong file. So yeah. yeah sorry. This is the file that I. Okay. Mm, where's the barcode file that I was using? Okay. Yes. So this is the file that you just downloaded. Okay. If you double click, I. Cancel. Cancel. Yeah. Okay. So uh in its sorry yeah for, for the mishap. So when you just download it right because I accidentally click this button, the generated path disappeared. So what we actually want to use from the project file is actually the connection path to the actual hardware. Okay. So you just copy, okay, copy this as well as the other uh recommended setting for your Ethernet IP. Okay. So but this is the most important one copy and then you can go back to your actual project create a connection with a user defined path okay and then as you have seen 138 okay so why 138 is because your first 10 bit is actually being t first 10 bytes is being used for other uh, purposes okay that we will see later so just now you just copy and paste the different setting. Ah. See, disappear already. Just be careful, don't touch these ah. ah otherwise you have to reopen. Okay. Three and one three eight. Three and one three eight. This number you can change depending on your uh setting. Okay, depending on your usage. Okay. So now I'll I can close my sample file from the online. Okay, and then we can proceed purely on this. Okay. So now on my side we have correctly configured this our device. Okay, so if I log in to my device, right? Okay. I lock in. I should will see that this thing will turn green. Okay. Okay. So now if we play, we'll start to connect. Okay. Oh, sorry. I didn't configure this part. Okay, then we need to load again. Okay, let me pause the video. Okay, so once you play, this guy should turn green also. Ah, okay, so once it turns green, means you have communication and it's done properly, okay? So now, on your end, okay, we'll need to add a bit of code. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna share the pre code that I pre-prepared for this project. Okay. Okay, so I added in. Okay, I I added in a function block that contains all the code, uh, linked to my ABR scanner for EIP. Okay, as well as I also created two uh, arrays to collect my data. So this address is actually chosen because if you go over to my IO mapping you'll see that my input starts from IB100 and I have 138 of them okay and my output uh, yes actually starts from QB100 and I have three of them okay so that's why you must link it to the correct address so that the function block can process it properly so 
to solve so as for the, this squiggly line you can see that I'm using the function word as string okay to help decode the word data into string data yeah as see the name suggests so this requires you to add the library util Sorry, no S. Util. Ah, okay. Never mind. Okay. Wait, let me add. Okay, actually, word. S. String. Okay, so the function I'm using, if I search it on the advanced, I'll be able to add it in. Okay, you add the whole util dat library in. Okay, so, and then now, we just need to run it, build it, and it should be okay. Okay, no problem with the building. Okay, so now now I'm gonna start, this is my uh, software programming okay oh and i think i neglect to say uh we, we need to do our device configuration first otherwise uh, this guy might not turn green okay otherwise this guy would not be green uh so i but it's okay lah i think you can just follow okay my apology okay so now if you open the banner barcode manager if you you should be able to see your hardware yeah check your uh, software version okay so if yeah make sure it's the latest okay for now if you want to update your software version you can actually uh, download you need to go and download the latest yeah the latest software major file download and install and then after that on your device you can actually update the package uh, and choose the right package okay just make sure it match to the latest one okay yeah and then once it's updated you can create a new configuration okay so now first adjust your screen and then press stop okay for you to start your automatic automatic configuration okay you can choose the code that you're expecting here you can start okay this will help to tune your barcode scanner to the right amount of lighting and exposure to catch your barcode okay so you need this and then secondly you go to the reading phase okay so on the reading phase uh, you can actually it's uh, actually doing a continuous mode where it just keeps on capturing and capturing and capturing so uh, this mode is okay but for our application sometimes you might just need it to catch only after it triggers a sensor or something so I would recommend either one shot mode or face mode. Okay. So uh, one shot mode is uh, very obvious. Uh, you trigger a sensor, it takes one photo. Okay. So let me show you why it's face mode. Okay. For face mode, yes, on and off. So once you the first time you trigger the sensor, you on the sensor. Okay. And continue on until you reach the face off. So for input one, once it starts when the input is high you will keep on capturing different images yeah okay until you get the first first reading first good reading okay and yes okay so once you have face on and off you can do it here okay and for our experiment's sake let's add our industrial protocol we are using EIP okay so Oh, uh, okay. 
so we can link if we also want a separate trigger of using our EIP to trigger the face on and off mode you can link it from dot to dot okay and then this will link your signal with this will link your signal okay so now you can actually turn on and off using our Ethernet IP okay so for on your input is leading uh, remember when you're doing off you must turn it off to trading okay otherwise it will be the same so on with leading off with trading which is the falling edge oh and one last thing so actually uh i think let me show you my camera okay so you can see this setup i actually have a laser sensor over here okay i actually have a Q q2x laser sensor as a trigger okay and it's actually a pnp uh, it's a it's a simple pnp photoelectric sensor okay so you need to configure it in input one so so you want it to turn on when it's close when there's the signal is high okay so you use active close and you can and because it's a PNP sensor configure it to PNP okay yeah if your this is configured by default this is MPN and if you're using a PNP sensor nothing will happen okay so now for configure communication similarly you just need to link it and you need to link it okay so just see the con see the setting so you notice that this set these two settings are the same just for your information discard uh, connection if i change over here you'll see that this thing change as well okay so just keep the default dis discard after connection which means all readings will be discarded ev every time after you disconnect from you disconnect the uh, sensor camera so now with this i think we can download the configuration into our device okay so you can save a new configuration okay you can call it configure demo okay so the minute once the thing is off it means it's saved successfully so if i run if i run the code you notice that okay my your code will be running if you see my camera okay you see that there will be a green light every time you read properly when my parser cross the trigger okay so if it doesn't read properly you see that you just keep ticking 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 until you get your barcodes okay so now okay now that you have your configuration let us check our code okay so if all is well you get your code over here okay your, your code is here as the output okay I saved it over to SVC. Okay, so let's let me change. Let me change a different parser. And you can see that my code has just changed. Okay. So you can s oh yeah, just to let you know. Okay, sorry. I forgot to show you. <laughs> so you can see this code is actually one hundred. It starts with one hundred, okay? So it goes in and then it triggers and you can see on my code it's 100 then this one 80 49 and you can see that my string has changed okay so that is all this is how you configure a simple AVR scanner for EIP thank you